Hello, you lovely lot, and welcome to the weekly Independent Spouse podcast. I'm Jess Sands, the founder of The Independent Spouse and current military wife running my own business, Design Jessica. Today I'm talking to Peter Mountford, the chairman of Herepreneurs, a unique UK registered charity that was founded in 2009 to help military veterans and their dependents on the road to creating their own business. Herepreneurs has helped thousands of businesses through their mentoring program and their business networking groups. At the heart of Herepreneurs is a highly effective mentoring program. All its mentors are successful entrepreneurs and business people who give their time entirely for free. Peter runs the mentoring program at Herepreneurs and mentors a number of members. He is also the chairman of the Veterans Foundation, which is part funded through the Veterans Lottery and is a charity firm to establish a nationwide source of funding to help military charities that struggle to raise funds. Peter is a successful chairman, financier and active investor. He has been on the board of many companies and is a specialist in providing strategic advice. In November, Herepreneurs is celebrating the achievements of its members with the Herepreneurs Awards in association with The Telegraph. It was so lovely to meet Peter in his beautiful home um, and due to the recent heatwave, we flung open the doors so there is the odd aircraft flying past, but I am sure that will make a few of you feel at home. It was great talking to Peter today. He has a lot of business knowledge that I'm sure you'll find really useful. So I really hope that you enjoy this second episode. Hello, Peter. Um, Thank you so much for inviting me to your very beautiful house and welcome to the new podcast series. An absolute pleasure, Jess. Oh, it's lovely to talk to you. Um, So firstly, Herepreneurs is such a fantastic charity that supports armed forces veterans and their dependents in so many ways. For those who might not have heard of you, could you give us a quick explanation um, of what Herepreneurs is all about? I would be delighted to. We created Herepreneurs in 2009 to help anybody that has, has been in the armed services or their dependents on the road to creating their own business. Now, As you know, it's so difficult to create a successful business. The government stats are that 50% of new businesses fail in their first four years. So we take our responsibility very seriously. We're not trying to just promote entrepreneurship for the sake of it or sell anything to anybody. And at the heart of Herepreneurs is a mentoring program that I run. Uh, And we've helped hundreds of people through our mentoring program and thousands of people through the, the rest of the work that we do particularly our networking events and the work that we do uh, online. And you're helped by an amazing team of volunteers. Um, You are one of them. So what do you think it is that inspires such well-established business people to want to support new businesses? Well, I'll try try and answer that in two two ways. Uh, At the heart of Herepreneurs is a mentoring programme that I run. And all of our mentors are successful entrepreneurs like myself or successful business people. And they've all founded successful businesses. So they've been there and they've counted the paper clips. Um, personally, I've, I've been involved in 25 different businesses, a small number of which have been very successful. Um, and it's that that allows me to spend as much time as I like now on Herepreneurs and the other charity that I chair that we're going to talk about soon. Um, we have no difficulty recruiting mentors because... It's such an interesting and rewarding thing to do. I'm a great believer in the right sort of people creating and running their own businesses. I've loved being an entrepreneur and it's worked well for me, but it is a huge challenge. So what do our mentors do? Well, I like to think that they behave like non-exec chairman in a Freudian way. So what does that mean? We can't run the businesses that our members run but hopefully we can challenge them. So when somebody first of all seeks our help, they may well send me an email or get in contact with me. The first thing that I require them to do is to go to our website and fill in quite a well-designed form. That takes them about half an hour to an hour. And then they press send and the form comes to me wherever I am in the world on my smartphone. Um, And the first shot they get is that I respond to them within a working day. People are used to applying for things and hearing nothing for days, weeks, months. I reply, I commit to reply within a working day. And what I offer them is they get to meet me on Skype or FaceTime because I'm the gatekeeper in our mentoring program. I've personally mentored over 40 new businesses, but I, I, and I can't take any more on at the moment personally, but I still act as the gatekeeper on our mentoring program. So I offer them a meeting with me on Skype or FaceTime um, over the ne- usually over the next seven working days. And the meetings are fascinating because I get to meet all sorts of different people from all sorts of different backgrounds, but they share a common origin 
which is the armed forces. And usually these people starting up, wishing to start up their own businesses, have only been able to talk to friends and family who usually don't have any commercial experience of starting up their own businesses. They don't really have a clue. And what I try to do in that initial meeting is work out whether somebody, first of all, has a sensible business model that they want to follow, um, and roughly whether, as an individual, they have the right character, uh, experience, um, and ability to make a success of what they're doing. But what we do is we challenge. So um, people frequently say to me, how many successful businesses has Heropreneurs helped create? That's not how I measure the success of Heropreneurs. Because somebody may well come to us that doesn't have the right business model, doesn't have the right experience, and it's probably better if they go and work for somebody else rather than start up their own business. And if by talking to us, they come to that conclusion, for me, that's an aspect of how heropreneurs succeed. Yeah, that really does make a, a real difference when you're starting up your business. Uh, some people worry that it's the starting off and taking that first big leap, getting into it. But actually, it's about the uh, longevity of your business. And you can have this fantastic business idea, but if you haven't um, thought about if there's a market for it and if you haven't researched it enough, then actually it can end up being a bit of a waste of time and a pointless exercise. And also you you frequently get ideas people that are great at coming up with ideas um, and that's what they feed off. They're the sort of the hunter-gatherers of the world, but they aren't necessarily the right people to actually run the business going into the future. They may want to have to find other people to work with that can pick up the pieces that they they leave behind them. It's an exceptional person that is able to come up with an original business idea and succeed at launching it and succeed as well at growing it and making a living out of doing it. Our mentoring programme is uh, all of our mentors are volunteers. None of us are paid for what we do at all. And I started off mentoring businesses um, that approach entrepreneurs myself about six years ago. And I thought that all of our mentors should be experts in the industry in which somebody actually wants to start up a business. And, and I was entirely wrong. They don't, for, for the majority of people that approach us, um, you don't need to, to be an expert in that particular business. But you do need to have, ideally, decades of successful commercial experience in order to be able to guide somebody. Um, Our mentors are unlikely to to say to somebody, oh my goodness, you've got a really bad business idea. I referred earlier to the fact that that I'm a great believer in Freudian mentoring. So I like to think that all all our mentors ask the right questions. And if somebody really does have a bad idea, they will, by asking the right questions and challenging them in the right way, they will realise over time, and it, it'll probably be more, more than one meeting, they realise over time that actually they should probably go in a different direction than the original direction they wanted to go in. Um, ideally, our mentors are ex-armed forces that have created their own business, and there are lots of those around there. We try and find mentors that can meet our members face-to-face, because Skype is fine for an initial meeting, but over an extended period of time doesn't work that well. And I tend to get huge shocks as well when I've met somebody on Skype and then I meet them in real life and they're either 10 times the size I thought they would be or only four foot six tall. (laughs) Uh, It's very confusing. So yes, ideally we look for people that can meet face to face once or twice a month for an hour or two each time. And we don't tend to operate a register of mentors. What happens is that when somebody approaches us, because my colleagues and myself have been in business for a long, long time, far longer than I'd like to think about, actually. We have a vast network of contacts, particularly people that are successful entrepreneurs that have created their own businesses. And um, it's very rare that we will approach somebody that we know and ask them to be a mentor and for them to refuse it. Everybody will find the time to do this because, from my experience, everybody respects the work that our armed forces does and realises as well that if somebody is going to start up their own business, it's such a wonderful thing to have an experienced mentor. I wish I'd had somebody like that. So our mentoring programme works incredibly well. And I could give you dozens of testimonials if you want them. People can, of course, make up their own testimonials, but uh, I can give you real people that you could speak to that can, can vouch for it. What Herefinance is also trying to do, because it's this it's a community of people that have no commercial interest in what we're doing, we, where we help somebody and they do create a successful business, we then expect them 
to pay back. Not in not financially, but they then give their time as a mentor as well. And we've got some some great people that do that and really help what we do. So, for example, Richard Gill, who was uh, who founded a business called Drone Defence. He had worked in the drone industry for quite some time and realised that there were too many people providing drone surveying services. So he, he realised that drones are a threat to a lot of people and organisations, for example, prisons. Um, people are delivering drugs, money, mobile phones into prisons using drones. Um, so he, he works with the Home Office to prevent drones getting into prisons. He went to the Monte Carlo boat show and sold his services to a number of high net worth people who have mega yachts that don't like drones flying over their mega yachts and taking photographs. So they bring them down using Richard's services. Um, Well, he's been incredibly useful uh, mentoring new people that approach us that want to start up in the drone industry. It's 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 quite a popular new career for people leaving the armed services to, to, to create. It, it's wonderful for me when I do, when I, when I, ha, I, have, a re, I have relationships with people that I've mentored that have, have created lovely businesses. Um, for example, Justin Crump of Sibyline, which is a, a risk and intelligent consultancy. Um, I've seen his business and he grow over the last five years that we've known each other to the extent now that I think he employs well over 20 people and has a business that is really unique and quite special in his particular sector. And uh, of course, what tends to happen is is when you have a successful mentoring relationship, um, it's it's very difficult to, to end that relationship. It tends to keep on going. And Justin and I still meet each other every month or two over a cup of coffee and we talk about what he's been up to. And, and he just finds the process of talking to me incredibly useful because because I tend to have an objective view on these things and to have just somebody probably, to be honest, he probably knows 99% of the answers himself, but he does like to just double check with me that he's got the right answers. Yeah, and it's so good to have a conversation with like another human about your ideas because then you can talk about what's working, what's not working. You can bounce your ideas off each other and really firm up those um, bits of your business that you might be struggling with. And having a mentor is great, especially having access to these brilliant business people that have done this before and have succeeded in their own businesses. You yourself have achieved some fantastic things within your own industry, but you're also the chairman of the Veterans Foundation. Could you talk about the impact that that is making? It's incredible. David Shaw, who was a um, a major general in the armed forces, came up with the idea of the Veterans Foundation a few years ago. And the way we describe the Veterans Foundation is it's it's a registered charity, recently joined COBSIO, And um, it's a national organization that raises funds to help veterans. And we're on Facebook, if anybody's interested. We have 109,000 followers on Facebook now. And the main way that we raise money for the charities that we support at present is the Veterans Lottery. And the Veterans Lottery is a superb thing. um, It costs 10 pounds a month to play. But don't expect to be a millionaire on it because our prizes are very modest. Our top prize at the moment is £25,000 unless there's a rollover each month. Um, And we currently have 15,000 people playing our Veterans Lottery each month. What's unusual about it is that our prizes are very modest and people are playing it to support veterans. What we do is commit to donate more than 50% of the ticket price to the causes that we support, unlike the National Lottery, which only donates 28%. So we have a, a growing community of people that wish to support the Veterans Foundation and the causes that we support. We've made grants and donations to over 50 other charities so far, and um, in the next 12 months, we expect to donate more than a million pounds in cash from the Veterans Foundation to the charities that we support. It's incredible, you know, the the support that we get from the great British public to support the causes that we support is extraordinary. And the challenge that smaller charities have in particular is that they don't have marketing budgets. They, they, they find it a struggle to raise funds and we do that for them. And if you go onto Facebook and our Facebook page is very active, we have also received some incredible support in marketing the Veterans Lottie from people like John White, from Stuart Hill, from Steve McCulley. They are the most incredible videos if you have a few minutes to go and have a look at them. I mean, Stuart Hill recently did a video for us that was published on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. And um, it's been viewed, I think, by half a million people now. And we've received over 8,000 likes and thousands of shares, which really surprised us because the video is four and a half minutes long. We thought that 
that people wouldn't want to watch something as long as that. And we had a 90 second one in reserve, <laughs> but it's overwhelmed us. And we're, we're currently talking to Stuart about creating a series of videos about him and his life. Because I think people would be interested in, in learning what happened to him before he was involved. In, um, he was blown up in Afghanistan about six years ago and suffered brain damage. You wouldn't know it when you speak to Stuart because he's spent years recovering and he's now turned himself into a Renaissance man, is a painter, a poet and the most incredible charismatic speaker. And obviously running a charity must be so rewarding. You talked before about the um, people that you've met and the stories that you've heard. But what would you say is one of your biggest highlights from running either Hiropreneurs or the Veterans Foundation? I find that an incredibly difficult question to, to answer actually. Um, uh, I, I, the reason that I that I do it is 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 the incredible people that I meet, and there have been dozens and dozens of people who show such incredible v- resilience. I'm embarrassed actually most of the time at um, how their lives compare to mine and how fortunate I've been in my life. Having had our heads down at Hero Preneurs for many years, trying to do what we can do as well as we possibly can, I decided a year ago that we should increase its profile whilst at the same time celebrating the achievements of people that have been in the armed forces in business. So on a little piece of paper, I came up with the idea of the Hiropreneurs Awards, thinking it would be a relatively straightforward and simple thing to run. Um, And I was very lucky and very fortunate at the same time uh, to discover that uh, a friend of mine, uh, Amanda Rayner, was an expert in running awards. And I thought, right, we should do our own Hiropreneurs Awards. And um, I came up with eight different awards that I I think... that I felt that we should celebrate. And um, the first thing that I, I felt that we needed was we needed a national newspaper to support us. Uh, I asked Stuart Higgins, who does a great deal of work for armed forces charities and happens to be uh, the ex-editor of a tabloid with a red topper, The Sun. And um, it, it will name people like Mick Jagger and Kate Moss amongst his many, many clients. I said to Stuart, look, could you introduce me to some quality newspapers. So he introduced me to Alistair Heath, who's the um, deputy editor of the Sunday Telegraph. And um, and I've spent my whole career avoiding publicity. I was terrified about meeting Alistair at the Telegraph's head offices in Victoria. Anyway, so I went to see him and he's one of these people that stares at you from behind his horn-rimmed spectacles. And after 15 minutes, he looked at me and he said, we will support you for an inaugural set of awards, which is extraordinary. Um, so we, it is the Hiropreneurs Awards in association with the Telegraph. And uh, the Telegraph will be running a series of articles on Hiropreneurs and what our members have been up to starting next Monday, I think, and running every month. The awards are on the 14th of November 2018 at the Playsters Hall. And um, I've never run any awards before, so I was very much the new boy on a block, but that's never deterred me from doing new things in the past. So the second thing that I thought was I needed an academic partner, and um, I was introduced to Warwick Business School, who, uh, unbeknownst to me, try and recruit at least half a dozen people each year from the armed services to do an MBA. And Warwick Business School is one of the top business schools in the world. And um, so I pitched the idea of the Hiropreneurs Awards to, to them, and they immediately got onto it and suggested that they would like to sponsor one of the awards, which is the Warwick Business School Award. And they immediately offered a prize, a real prize for the winner of the Warwick Business School Award, which is a 20, was a 25% bursary worth about, at the time, £12,500. Um, they thought about that a bit more and they then decided that they were going to offer a 100% bursary for the winner of that award, which is worth forty-five to £50,000. And we have had some extraordinary entries for that award. So I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing who the winner on, on that particular category is. And we have six other categories, Entrepreneur of the Year, Startup of the Year, Military Partner of the Year. Which we're most excited about. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Herepreneur of the Year is a special award that will go to somebody that was injured either physically or mentally while serving in the armed forces that has created a successful business. And we have some fascinating entries for that. And then I thought, well, I need to recruit some really credible judges because at the heart of any decent awards are the judges. And um, so I went to Sir John McCall, who's a retired four-star general that is the chairman of Cobsio and the retired governor of Jersey. And uh, he was incredibly enthusiastic about it and um, uh, volunteered to be chairman of our judges. We have some wonderful other ju- other judges. We've got Deborah Meaden from Dragon's Den, who is a great supporter of the armed forces and obviously a very successful entrepreneur. Uh, we have Paddy Ashdown, who has been one of my lifelong heroes. I've just 
finished reading his wonderful biography. Um, he seems to have lived many lives in one. And uh, so what, what, I mean, we, we, the process is now, unfortunately, for anybody that wanted to apply, it's been closed now for, for nominations and applications. But we have been overwhelmed by the number of applications that we've got. And we have some really quality people in there that we look forward to celebrating. And from the point of view of the charity, none of us... Uh, again, that, that, that run here at Preneurs charge anything for, for running the awards either. And I'm hoping that if we do achieve a surplus, that all of that surplus will go into, it will be used for the benefit of the charity, it will go into the Here Preneurs charity to ensure its longevity as um, the years go by. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to how the Heropreneurs Awards develops. And I think our first ceremony in, in November is going to be astonishing. And it can only get better from there. But I have said all along that the Heropreneurs Awards is as much about the journey getting to the 14th of November as it is about the evening. And it's certainly been one hell of a journey so far. Well, we love it. And we are very excited about the Partners in Business Award. I have a few friends that have been nominated and are really looking forward to it. Um, so, yeah, we're really excited. And it's really good that we're getting recognised because sometimes we can get a little bit forgotten. So hopefully one of your things for the future will be the continuation of the Heropreneurs Award. But if nothing could hold you back, where do you see Heropreneurs being in five years? Ah, well, that's an interesting question. And I bet there's a lot of people out there that would like to know the answer to that question. Um, Stuart Nicholl, who uh, is one of my colleagues uh, and one of the most active trustees that we have. We both feel that we would like to think that anybody that is leaving the armed services that is thinking about creating their own business makes contact with us. So that's us. It's a simple objective, actually. We're very demand-led. And so where there is a demand for what we do, we try and meet it. What we do works incredibly well because of the people that do it. If um, if somebody comes to us and says that they'd like to start up their own business, but they don't know what to do, we're not very good at helping them. If somebody comes to us and says that they've got a business idea and they want to do a business plan and can we help them do the business plan, we're not very good at that either because all of our mentors tend to be a bit long in the tooth and have grey hair and they expect somebody that wants to start up their own business to be able to do their own research or go on their own training course if they really must. But I think going on a training course to learn how to do a business plan is, to be honest, it's a waste of time. There's loads of information available on the web about how to write a business plan. So again, we're not very good at doing that. We expect people to come to us with ideas that have been worked out to some extent and then we will help them refine them in a highly commercial way. You know, I I frequently hear of of mentoring programs where mentors are not experienced enough or or suited to being mentors. And I shudder to think the sort of advice that people are getting from from mentors like that. They really, it's it's irresponsible. Yeah, and that's definitely the strength in having a mentor that has travelled through the business world and has either succeeded or made their own mistakes and that they've learned from them and then they can pass them along when they're mentoring you. There's a great deal of um, successful entrepreneurs that have have had business failures. In fact, there are are a whole group of venture capitalists in the States that will only invest in businesses where the founders have had at least one failure because you learn a great deal from failure. I'm not saying that my business career was a bed of roses. It certainly wasn't all the time. You have your ups and downs. But hopefully, from the downs, you get something out of it and you learn something from it. And, um, And what tends to happen is people with their own businesses have little failures all the time and hopefully they get something from that. The key thing that you've got to be able to do when you create a new business is you've got to be decisive and you've got to make decisions and you've got to move on because if you're incapable of making decisions um, your business won't progress at all. Sarah Stone, our ambassador in Scotland, introduced me to a wonderful personality test called The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin and um, if, if anybody is interested in what sort of personality type they are, it's well worth doing it. You can go online and do the test and it's quite an eye-opener and uh, there are certain personality traits that successful entrepreneurs tend to have. You can't say it across the board and I certainly fall into one of those personality traits uh, but it's it's well worth having a little look at it. But uh, there is a, there's a big debate as to whether entrepreneurs are born or whether they're made. I, I happen to subscribe to the view that there are certain types of people that probably could never be an entrepreneur. But I think the vast majority of people can create their own businesses. It's just that they probably need a push in the right direction to do it and a bit of help along the way. You know, frequently people create their own businesses because they don't have any choice. And that doesn't mean that they aren't going to be successful at what they do. 
One of the things that the armed forces teaches you, I'm sure, is resilience. And as an entrepreneur, you've got to be resilient because if every little defeat that you suffer gets to you and, and stops you in your tracks, that is a disaster. If you've got thin skin, you've got to somehow turn your skin into the skin of a rhinoceros. Um, and we also find that, uh, so going back to here at Nurse for a minute, so we provide the mentoring help, but another key part to what we do is helping people network because when people people from the armed services go into business frequently they don't have the sort of business network that they need to succeed and if you if you want to succeed in business you've got to have a great network it's about but it's about getting away from your computer screen and getting out there and meeting people and talking to people and when you have the attention of somebody in a proper conversation not in an email in a proper conversation you have their attention and they will find ways in which they can help you so one of the things that my colleague Stuart Nicol does is he arranges networking meetings proper networking meetings where we gifted a, a room um, in, a, in a venue somewhere and we get a great speaker along and we try and get as many people as possible to come along to those networking meetings and they hopefully are given the opportunity to, to explain to everybody why, why they're there and what their ambitions are and everybody else in the room will try and help our networking meetings are superb and um, we were lucky enough before Christmas for Google to host, host one of our networking meetings we got over 75 people to that one and the topic for discussion was digital marketing and digital advertising which most people that start up their own businesses are fascinated by and uh, so that was a huge insight and I, I'm hoping that Google will do a lot more for us there. Something else that we do which is just terrific is we hold Dragon's Den Days and uh, the last one that we held was sponsored by Goldman Sachs and uh, our Dragon's Den, Den Days are extraordinary. It was something that we came up with a few years ago. Money doesn't change hands. It's not about raising investment for your business. But um, what we do is we invite an audience of dragons along to hear pitches from our members. Um, our members are each given an hour and a half. It's a pretty daunting thing to do, but an incredibly rewarding thing. So they have to prepare a half an hour presentation on their business, including questions. They stand up, give half an hour's presentation, and then they are invited to leave the room and we tear their businesses apart. And after we've torn their businesses apart using um, the six hats technique they're invited back into the room and we, we then deliver the results to them uh, and so for our members and by the way our members are invited to stay for the whole day so they get to see six different pictures frequently our members haven't ever done anything like this before and um, most of them do terrific presentations. What they get is they get the experience to do the presentation and uh, you know, actually having to prepare for something like this is quite a task in itself. Our audience are very friendly and supportive. We're not trying to destroy businesses or, or individuals, trying to actually help them succeed. And the advice that our audience gives and again, the networking opportunities that are created from it are exceptional. And uh, I can say without doubt that everybody that comes, that is inv it's an invited group of our members that does it. We'll be doing more with Goldman Sachs. We're talking to other major organizations about doing it with them. And, and it's fantastic that Goldman Sachs is prepared to support something like this. Um, that there are seven to eight people from Goldman Sachs from different areas of their business that give their time entirely for free for the day. Um, and it's a terrific commitment on their part. And brilliant to have access to those types of people that you wouldn't normally have access to. Now, if I wanted to get in touch with you, so if I wanted to get involved with your Dragon's Den days or your networking, or if I was looking for a mentor, how can I find you? Well, of course, we've got a website and uh, you can go to our website and or you could email me at peter at herepreneurs.co.uk. That's quite a simple email address to remember. And um, so if you're interested in benefiting from my mentoring program, we do insist that you go to our website and you fill in our form. Um, if you're interested in being a mentor, you have to do the same. And we have quite a, um, a strict vetting process, which involves meeting me. <laughs> um, uh, if you're interested in coming to our events, have a look at social media. Um, and we're on Eventbrite. We usually market most of our events on Eventbrite. If you want to keep in touch with what Herepreneurs is up to, go to our website and opt in under GDPR. There's a little form at the bottom of our homepage to opt in. We won't bombard people with emails. Um, 
we honestly won't bombard people, but it's it's um, it's it's great for us to know that of the of the many people that have signed up to keep in touch with us, that we will send out occasional emails. We're interested in, in volunteers as well because here at Paners is all about volunteers. So if somebody thinks that they can volunteer their time and services, please let me know because we do get very challenged in certain areas. We don't have an office. We don't have a CEO. We're not paying ourselves anything. We're not trying to sell anything to anybody. And because of that, we're just doing it because it is the most enjoyable thing to do and the right thing to do as well. And long may it continue. Oh, I hope so. And I'm really looking forward to the Heropreneurs Awards in November. And uh, do you still have tickets available? And if so, how can we get hold of them? Absolutely we do. Yes. I mean, we've concentrated on um, inviting people to apply for awards or be nominated so far. But um, shortly we will be selling tables. Because we're not running the awards for a profit uh, and because I'm new to running awards, I'm hoping we do it in the right way. And unusually for for awards, all of our shortlisted finalists will get to come to the awards for free. Um, And all our judges come to come for free as well but nevertheless to uh, ensure that the economics of the awards do go to plan we're mainly looking for corporates and other organizations that would like to buy tables we've had some incredible corporate support for the awards and uh, i should really mention ed jesson in particular of obx tech who is an american veteran who is one of our key sponsors and ed has been a supporter of heropreneurs for many years it's great for us because we have a partner across the pond who knows what's happening in the States and uh, and can point us in the, in the right direction. And I'm sure that there, there is much more that we would do with Ed as the years go by. Uh, and I know this because, to be honest, American veterans are helped so much more by American businesses than happens over here. And so Ed is our mentor and guide, guider on that, which is great. And uh, Goldman Sachs are sponsoring our awards as well, which is absolutely brilliant. To have an inaugural set of awards with such a, a, an eminent organisation as Goldman's is brilliant. And of course, um, I'm delighted to say as well that Kevin Sneeder, who is about to become global managing partner of McKinsey, has bought a table personally to support Heropreneurs and the awards. I met Kevin a few years ago, and when I told him about Heropreneurs, he said, and I'll never forget these words, he said, Heropreneurs is a big idea. I love big ideas. I can't wait for the award ceremony. Um, I hope that I get to come along and I get to bring some of my fellow spouse business owners with me. So as we're nearing the end, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about military spouses that you've been supporting through Heropreneurs. Could you explain a little more about the spouses that you've been working with and how you've helped them? We've helped uh, many military spouses in our mentoring programme. And um, military spouses are, are challenged in different ways to other people. First of all, because the likelihood is that they will frequently move. And secondly, the challenges of, if you have young children in particular, of raising a family and trying to create a new business are horrific. Um, And, you know, I've met a number of military spouses that have had a a crack at creating their own businesses. And some of them I my greatly. For example, Helen Mason, who has had a go at creating her own business called Zingping. Now, Helen is married to a serving submariner and also has two very young children. And a couple of years ago, decided that she wanted to create her own business. And Zingping is involved in providing entertainment at events like weddings. So she uses stop-start video technology to create short videos for guests at weddings, which is entertainment in itself. And it's an absolute riot. And then they have something to take away with them to remind them of the event afterwards. And I mean, at the moment, I'm sorry to say that Helen has shelved her, her business because it was too much for her, because Gus, her husband, would disappear for weeks, if not months at a time, underwater, unable to contact him. And she would be left at home trying to run a new business and look after a family at the same time. And just the practicalities of that made it incredibly difficult for her to continue. So she's retrenched at the moment. We'll be reverting back to it, won't you, Helen, if you're listening to this podcast? Um, and we will do whatever we can to help her at that time. And um, and she went through a lot of personal angst, but she'll come back. And um, at the same time, you know, we see military spouses like Sophie Corriton, who has set up a, a new business called The Room Service, and she's, she's married to a serving officer and also has two young children. Now, Sophie qualified as a, as a barrister whilst in the Navy and has now gone on to create her new business, The Room Service. I think it's theroomservice.co.uk. UK. Don't blame me, Sophie, if I got your website wrong. But um, so she has created a business that is an online site for selling 
beautiful objects that you may well find in boutique hotels. So if you go and stay in a boutique hotel and you like a lamp next to the bed or the type of sheets that they have on the bed, I mean, this happens a lot. Um, you can go to the room service site and you can buy those beautiful things. And she's also helping promote the work of, of craftspeople that, that, that hand make beautiful objects as well. Um, she launched to much publicity a few weeks ago and uh, we've been helping Sophie and I very much hope that she's successful in what she does. Um, and uh, I think she will be. Oh, I'm sure she will. As um, military spouses, we're all very resilient and resourceful and we can achieve some amazing things because we are living in a world where you just have to crack on and get stuff done. And that is the joy of running a business as a military spouse. You can fit it around this crazy military life. So I'm afraid we have reached the end. Um, But thank you so much, Peter, for talking to me today. I have found out so many things that I'm sure people will find very useful. And we're so excited about the Hiropreneurs Awards. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much for running two fantastic charities that help military spouses and their partners across the country. Thank you, Jess. It's been so much fun talking to you and meeting you today. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the episode as much as I've enjoyed making it. Don't forget to pop over to www.theindependentspouse.co.uk to check out the amazing freebies that are on there. And while you're there, why not subscribe to the podcast so that you get to hear it as soon as it's released. And if you like what you hear, I'd love you to leave a review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps spread the word so that more lovely people like you can listen to the episodes. Thank you for listening to the Independence Pass podcast. I'll be back next week with another inspiring interview. See you then.